Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever it is, wherever you are, welcome to the Good Values Podcast. This episode is a little bit different, the one which I've been intending to do for quite some time. Um, yeah, it's a bit unorthodox, but I think it should be quite interesting. I've not seen anyone do this before, and uh, I'm hoping that there's some quite interesting results. So, okay, here's my conversation with Simon Lee Renshaw. So if you don't mind, would you introduce yourself for the audience? Uh, yes, I'm uh, Simon Lee Renshaw. I'm a fine artist. I predominantly work in film and I shoot and edit footage. And I also produce music that is kind of a soundscape, which uh, accompanies the footage that I shoot. Um, that's mostly what I do anyway. Okay, very good. Yeah. Um, firstly, I'd like to ask... Uh, how is it you got started in making art? Well, the art that I make at the moment, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, it's uh, something which developed in university because uh, with isolation, I couldn't attend the school in order to present paintings for them to be assessed. So the painting tutor advised me to consider another medium. And I said to him, because I've been making art films, would that be viable? And he agreed it's probably the best route. I started making films uh, before that, but not um, in that with that motivation, if you know what I mean. I basically, um, I would make films because I enjoyed footage. I really appreciate cinema. And I basically uh, would like to share my own vision and messaging um, through different filmmaking. And that's uh, that's kind of what I presented to the school, really, as my work. Um, I do drawing and painting as well. Um, I draw with both pencils and with ink. But my arts that I've been presenting to school and um, that I got graded for was, was art films. So that all developed from uh, a necessity to present work whilst living in isolation, really, um, which is tricky. But uh, it was something which I uh, developed based on um, being inside so often and filming myself in isolation. And then I would film other things in between. And I found the in-betweens more interesting than the footage of myself. So I have, you know, hard drives full of videos, terabytes, you know, two terabyte hard drives and several of them full of videos of different things. And um I started to notice that the in-between scenes were more compelling, really, than the uh, than the scenes where I was filming myself doing things, you know. Um, so that's really how it started. It was only a few years ago. Okay. Um, so, what um, what is it that um, where is it you find inspiration? What's your inspiration for making art? Well. Okay, um, I would say I love cinema, so I watch a lot of film that way. But to be honest, making art can usually be influenced by other things. So a lot of the time it will be um, either going out and seeing things where you weren't expecting to film and you just happened upon something which is just, it's just impossible to let pass by. You have to capture it so I'll try to film it and that will usually get integrated into a film um, afterwards so it's not always planned scenes it's sometimes a, a kind of a a patchwork of something where I will go out and shoot something specifically with that um, intention of capturing something and other times it will just be in the moment and I'm inspired to film and to actually create the film the inspiration is, uh, it's sometimes just thoughts and ideas, just daydreams, 
you know that can be what, what where it comes from uh, and I, I do like paintings and drawings for inspiration that makes me want to film things as well you know and capture footage it's usually where I get a lot of inspiration from music it can be from anywhere I could go on and on it can be from anywhere a lot of different sources you know um, yeah music thoughts and ideas other people and just by chance happening upon things that I find interesting. So um, I suppose the next thing that would be interesting to find out is what is it you value about art? I know it's a big question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I suppose... It's kind of the, what I value is the way it can inspire others as much as it inspires me. You think of the populace at large and how much art has permeated different facets of society and industries. And it can inspire people um, not just to make art themselves, but to just feel like part of this greater um, landscape, really. And art had this, has this kind of unique way of um, messaging things without being necessarily preachy or direct about it. It depends what type of art. Um, but I really value the fact that people can go through an exhibition and feel changed by it. You know, it can really affect you in a way where you feel value for everything in life after experiencing an exhibition um that's usually what i think is just so powerful about it and that's really what i what i value about the uh the whole uh exploration of of art making i think that's the the biggest thing for me really um yeah yeah i'd say that's the influence that it has on others you know yeah. yeah okay um well i suppose if i could ask a more broad question and i'm taking this from another podcast um so it's because uh i really quite like the idea of posing a question that i i'm not sure i know the answer to and that is um what is art Okay. Uh, I mean, I describe art as the creative process that people engage with because I don't know if you can think about an example of that which wouldn't be art. But I have heard conversations about, you know, how there's found art where it's not necessarily something which someone's made. It's just something that you come across, say, some dusty bricks among a painted wall um, and it's just a patch which is rough and that will look so aesthetically pleasing that it becomes something which gets described as art and yet no one's made that like that purposely it'll be weathered or something or an accident and that's still art yeah but i think yeah. that's no i appreciate process, that you know um yeah what i also like to find out from people is um does your work have a color palette yeah do you go um is your work heavily saturated or um kind of it's a mixture the film the film is yeah some scenes are some scenes aren't um i suppose I don't like heavily saturated film necessarily, except for in certain scenes. And I think the way that I film, I try to keep things fairly washed out and tertiary because I don't like things being too poppy necessarily. I think it's to do with the landscape where I am. I quite like things a bit more dulled down. I, I quite like overcast days. Uh, that's just my personal preference, really. And I think it's quite um, pleasing to have something which is not quite so vibrant. And I know mm. that might sound strange, okay. but yeah. I think it can be a little bit um, overwhelming, you know. 
and overpowering. Well, another question which I used to ask, and I it's been a while since I've asked people this. I think it's because I don't have it written down. And it's one which will be difficult to answer, but I quite like to pose the question in case someone has an interesting uh, response. And that is, uh, what do you think is the future of art or of art making? <laughs> well, it's tricky. Um, there's obviously AI and there's NFTs. And we might have only seen part of the trajectory of NFTs because of different conversations that are kind of suggesting it's been stunted or that it's whatever they people say about NFTs. We might only have seen the early parts of that. I'm not sure. I really don't know enough about it. And AI I'm not really involved in, but I can imagine that will have uh, quite a heavy impact on it. But I also... I feel as though people are always going to harken back to old fashioned ways of making things, just like filmmakers do now, where they kind of romanticize the film grain and they try to emulate that digitally because um, practical effects and things like that are really still highly valued in um, in cinema. I think that's still got a big uh, appeal, just like how vinyl came full circle Um I do think that old fashioned methods are going to be woven into the future of art making alongside digital and um, and AI produced work, as well as uh, anything else that is a, a kind of an innovation. Because I suppose that's based on things which you like the sound and idea of because it's all positive. Uh, I'm not trying to make you say anything negative. I'm just saying that, um, well, uh, not things aren't always, things aren't always um, going to be necessarily what you hope it's going to be. So I suppose my question is more, can you envision the future of fine art, um, to be more specific? Because not only is there the traditional drawing, painting, sculpture, um, there is um, far more um, cerebral work being created that is provocative and philosophical. And it has a lot of, you know, pros and cons about it. And I think that that might be... Uh, you see, I wonder if that's plateaued and that is now we're we're at the point where we've seen that now reach its point of transformation and I mean again it's going to go quite optimistic there so I suppose if I think about more of the things which I'm not as keen on I was introduced to certain ideas in university like um, there was one where an artist had uh, paid someone to befriend their friend and to share gossip that they'd had with their friend with them and they published that as their artwork and that's really quite a sinister and deceptive means of creating artwork in my view mm. you know yeah yeah it's curious i um no i appreciate that um i suppose i'd be curious about um because you mentioned university what was your experience was that good did you really learn a lot of things was it no oh <laughs> not really not a lot of things. I learned some things. There was there was a good tutor there, um, or a tutor that I really uh, had a lot of hopes for, but he left, um, and he'd been off ill, and he was just barely there. But when he was there, it felt as though it was rigid, which I quite like, you know, the, the whole, this is what you need. You need to bring this, 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 and this, and we're going to learn this. And then there was a painting tutor who was, full of kind of enthusiasm and love and dreams and all this stuff, which was fantastic because he was a painter and he was a colorist. So he has really wild ideas about how to paint. And um, that was both good. But the the rigid tutor was a sculpting tutor. He left and then they introduced a sculpting tutor who wasn't necessarily bringing the same 
package of uh, discipline and rigidity that I admired in the previous tutor. So it was a mixed bag. There was really bad things. There was nepotism. So the dean of the university, um, his wife was all of a sudden the head tutor. I mean, joint head tutor, but still the head tutor of the department. And she seemed to be completely uh, inconsiderate and unprofessional. And she basically protected people who were being very toxic in the studio space. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the university even tried to uh, threaten me to take down my podcast, which I had called Studio Buddies, which has since finished. And so, sad, sadly, it's uh, affected the friendship that I had with the co-host. And um, that's just one of those things, it's just a byproduct of the pressure and stress of university. But if there's lost trust, then how can you regain that um, that connection and that friendship? So university was a real mixed bag of there's bits that were really good. The building was quite nice. It had the potential to be good. But the students in the fine arts department weren't necessarily nice either. There were some who were OK, but there was enough who weren't who had infected the ones who were OK. And there was only a handful of students who were concerned enough about others that it was affecting their education. And basically trying to correct that, trying to report it, trying to discuss it, just wasn't welcome and put the target on your head. So it was a really negative um, space and environment for me to experience. Um, I'd start off making, you know, lots of drawings and trying to show, you know, my interests are here and here and here. And I'd do a landscape painting and I'd say, this is what I'm trying to do is, you know, if it kind of, influenced by this and this and then but I would find that if I had the opportunity to make a film then I would jump at that chance to try and make a film yeah. just to show that side of my abilities as well I thought it'd be something which they could say okay you've got this this and this let's see whatever and they'd work with you but they really didn't care about the individual they'd just pick out words that you'd said and go okay you've said the word clinical Let's what's see. The, uh, what's this that you're working on at the moment? Do okay, you have any yeah, so, projects that you're currently involved with? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, um, at the moment, I'm collaborating with um, uh, an artist called uh, Petra Guetta, and she's actually been on your podcast. She was uh, episode three, I believe. I'm not sure. You, you tell me what, what episode you can link it. But um, her and I are collaborating at the moment, and it's early days, but we've had meetings and discussions. We're doing a bit of networking and um, we're starting to now create the work and um, keep the research in mind and try to uh, try to continue uh, the kind of momentum, really. So I'm going to start doing vlogs based on the process of that work and the development of it. I'm trying to discuss how you get from creating work or, or building an idea and creating work based off an idea and then talk about how to approach an arts council for funding as well so that's what i'm working on at the moment um okay. as well as yeah. some short films um <clears throat> now there are some questions which uh, i ask every guest on the podcast and especially these uh, last three questions i say three the last one is um it's a double barrel question, so it's kind of one question with two, uh, both sides of a coin, basically. Um, but the first one, not the double barrel, um, is what is the most beautiful thing you've seen today? <laughs> um, all right, okay. Uh, I would say it's the clouds against the sky. It's very often the most beautiful thing I've seen. They just seem to have this warmth to the clouds where it's a mustard yellow, tints of brown, bits of grey, and then against a light blue sky, almost a pastel blue. And it's just a really nice combination. And then against that as well, the stuff on the ground is not brightly lit. So when I see um, the sun isn't illuminating, you know, the, uh, the fence or something around the house, that will be quite dull. And it just heightens the other elements. So it's usually the relation between those different things. 
that I find the most beautiful and that's what I saw today and uh, I loved it it made me want to film it or paint it but I didn't do either you know but it was absolutely beautiful yeah undeniably um, something which I really remember clearly you know I feel as though I could paint that now from memory because it was uh, so impactful and things like that are you know still out there still happening it's just an ongoing artwork in the sky you know it's, it's fantastic so I always find uh, the clouds uh, in relation to the colour of the sky and the tones on the ground to be very uh, very beautiful and very uh, influential to me they resonate you know quite deeply with my uh, love for that for that aesthetic I think you know for that gorgeous magic that can occur naturally between colour and tone I think that's what's the most powerful mm. thing to me is no that's good no yeah, I like that lines. that's good um, and the last question is uh, what do you like and what don't you like about your own artwork my own about artwork your own art. yeah about your own artwork artwork okay um, <clears throat> well my films are they're basically at the moment what I do like is that some of the things that I'm filming, I find to be quite engaging. So I do like some of the um, subjects that I'm capturing. And I think that there is definitely some things there which are, um, I don't know, they're just, they, they kind of hold my attention. So that's, you know, a lot of what I think is really good about that. Um, but it could be better. And what I don't like is that there's less structure than I think there should be. And I think I'm not doing quite as much as you can do with films to try to really change the perspective of the story or of the image and um, things like that. I really need to play with. I need to tighten up the editing a lot more. There are lots of uh, elements of the filmmaking process that I just haven't ventured into deeply enough in order to make it um, really stand out. And that's something which I'm going to consider doing soon. But um, yeah, that's what I don't like at the moment is that it feels a little bit, um, feels a little bit uncut, the uncut version, you know, the director's cut version of the films where it could use a bit more of uh, structure imposed and, um, and some more clear themes, you know, some, um, I don't know what you call it, some uh, motifs, you know that are um, dominant enough, predominant enough, that are um, strong enough that they become embedded in the subconscious of the, of the viewer. You know, it's something where I can really work on that aspect of the storytelling, not to make it an obvious story, but to make it a little bit more to carry the viewer through the entirety of the, of the film. I think that could be something which could really use some work and uh, I, I just don't appreciate some of the um, the lack of knowledge that I've really got embedded in some of those final edits. Yeah, no, that's good. I appreciate that. That's good. Um, I suppose the only uh, other thing I'd like to ask is, uh, is there any social media accounts or websites or anything which you'd like people to be directed towards i haven't actually created simon lee renshaw as a social media profile yet that is something which i need to do and if i do then i will definitely give you the links for it but um there's no instagram facebook twitter or anything like that i've just not i've just not engaged with that really it's it's not been something where i wanted to share it that way i'm very much an in-person old-fashioned practitioner at this point um but potentially if that gets updated then we can always uh i don't know update the the information and uh, i'll let you know but currently no not really no there isn't really anything that i can think of um not even an email address there's no simon lee renshaw email address i maybe need to create that and to see if it's available okay be. yeah you know. well 
I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for being on the podcast. Thank you. And uh, Thanks for having me. And yeah, everyone, check out the uh, the social media links <laughs> that are uh, listed in the description below. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah. thanks very much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, that was admittedly a little bit strange. I thought for quite a while how to execute this idea. Um, should I be um, breaking the fourth wall and referring to what's happening or just play it straight? And I thought the best idea would be to pose the same questions as I would to any guest and to just leave the space that I thought would be acceptable. Because this portion, this side with the beard and the hair, was all recorded without any other side to listen to. So it was, uh, it was <laughs> tricky to think how much time to leave I couldn't in my head start to answer because I think I would start to emote and I'd be on the camera going, you know, I don't want to be making faces as if I'm answering the question. And I just didn't think I could do it. So I just, it's almost, it's weird in my head. It was almost like, la, 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 I just think. Just nod and I'll try to fill this space. Um, yeah, so a bit of backstory is the reason why I've put this off for so long is one, it's a very weird and tricky idea. Two, I had another idea to do with my beard and long hair, which I thought I might as well line up at a similar time. And three, because I was uploading YouTube videos so regularly until recently, I was uploading nine videos a day. I mean, it's, it's currently um, 4th of November, uh, 2022. Um, so for the whole of October, 2022, I'd been uploading nine videos a day because uh, I was doing the Inktober challenge with my left hand this year because I had an injury with my right hand in, uh, at the end of September. And then... So I did that and that was seven videos a week and then I'd do the podcast which I'd have to obviously book a guest and record it and edit it and then I would have a clip from the previous week's podcast so that makes nine videos a week and it was quite full on so I thought I don't want to have inconsistencies with my beard and hair in that time because I just I think it'd bother me for the continuity. Um the other ideas that I mentioned with my beard and hair, which is strange, I tried last night. I say tried, I started last night because that's it. I started doing it and I, I'm i going to keep what I've got. Initially, I had this plan of doing several takes and whatever. I'll, I'll just explain it first. It's a strange um, performance that I thought of doing and it's inspired by um, a 1966 film, I believe it is. It might be earlier, it might be 62. I'm trying to think. Um, it's a French film called Playtime. And uh, when I saw that, I thought I have to try to do something as... I don't know, it's kind of... Um, how do I explain it? The performance was kind of... It wasn't natural. It was, it wasn't played up into big performance, but it just had this quality to it where I thought I want to create that reality within my um, environment, as in a performance where you play it straight. You try to have certain elements of social interaction. And you hope that, I mean, this is not what the film did, but I my hopes were that it would um, start to reveal certain um, thoughts and uh, feelings about um, the human condition and um, certain traditions or just social norms that we, that, that usually go unnoticed, I suppose. 
and that's something which I've not built into it. I just hope that it becomes um, a byproduct of the performance. So what I did last night was I um, arranged five different outfits for different characters. I got out a lot of um, furniture. I say a lot. For me, it's, you know, it was carrying a lot of furniture. It was um, about 10 past one in the morning. I got a lot of lights. I had one camera. It was my mobile phone. And I basically had emptied out my mobile phone onto my PC so that I had enough space. I charged it up so that I had enough battery. I had the outfits. I had the lights. I had the, uh, the furniture. I also had several props, um, things like a fake cigarette, a newspaper, um, glasses, even though they're part of an outfit, they can kind of be props in a way, um, a ukulele, uh, what else was there? Oh, and, um, and I pour myself drinks of whiskey. I only did one drink of whiskey and I don't know whether the rest of the performance, because until I shave and I cut my hair, the rest of the performance won't be complete. But this is what I'm doing and what I had to align with this idea um, is to ensure that certain things all matched up so that I could do it. And I now have the space on YouTube because I've been uploading so frequently. I'm leaving a bit of space and then I'm going to come back fresh with a bit of a different look and a different edit to the videos. Um, I've also got uh, this podcast down, which I wanted to do an interview um, of myself whilst I was uh, mid-transformation. And um, the other thing was the weather conditions. It had to be still. It had to be not raining and not especially cold so that I could have different outfits without being, um, you know, struggling. And I could see my breath last night, but it wasn't especially cold. If anything, I got quite warm. So it was fun. It was a lot of work. There were things that went wrong. Um, I'll do a video about it, not a podcast, but I'll do, I mean, I say not a podcast. I might do a podcast. I just think it'd be better suited to a YouTube video where I show some behind the scenes to an extent um, and discuss some of the things that went wrong because I imagine that's just the nature of filming performances is that things just unforeseen issues occur and that's what happened. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that I did it. I'm looking forward to stitching it all together. I need uh, three other elements because I only did two characters last night and because um, I can't do too many characters with a beard and long hair. And... Yeah, I suppose the other um, the other thing that I wanted to discuss was that I uh, had intended on having my portrait drawn by a professional artist before I cut my hair or my beard, but to try and get them to be available as well. It was just too much to juggle at once. So for the time being, it's just going to be whatever I can fit in. Um, it's midday now. I can't imagine I will go to their house to have a portrait drawn because that can take over an hour and then I have to have a shave maybe cut my hair I might just have a shave first do other parts of the performance then cut my hair do other parts of it I don't know but I've got to um, at least have a shave and then do the podcast with me having a shave um, I don't know I'm still thinking about the mechanics of it as you can see either way I hope it was uh, an enjoyable episode um, I thought it'd be interesting for me to answer the questions that I ask other guests because when I ask the questions, I don't have my answers ready. And it, even now, I, I really don't know what I'm going to say when I answer these questions. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know now. Uh, I don't know at this point <laughs> what's been said. Um, but yeah, for me, it's all a bit unknown. So, yeah, I thought it'd be a fun idea. I hope it's worked out okay. Um, 
I have some exciting guests ready in the future. I have interviewed on Monday, no, was it Tuesday this week? Tuesday this week, I interviewed a uh, photographer, a professional photographer and a conservationist. And it's going to be split into two different podcasts and also released as one giant podcast. Um, very fascinating person, really interesting. Lots of amazing work to share and great stories. And um, that's one which I was going to try and get done for this week, but I'm going to get it done for next week instead. I also have been in talks with Jared Moralt on... Uh, because I found him on Instagram initially. Fantastic illustrator. If you don't know his work, then look him up. He's phenomenal. And he is, um, he's not officially booked a date yet, but he's assured me that he will be um, on the podcast. And we think at the moment it will be sometime in November. So look forward to that happening soon. Aside from that, I have a, a guest that I used to... Um, see at a, an art academy that I joined before going to university and she was very highly skilled there was a couple of people there who were really you know professional standard and she was one who would draw and paint really well and I'd really look up to her and she's a very nice person as well and um, I love talking to her and I've not interviewed her yet but I am in talks with her about going and interviewing her outdoors because she doesn't use computers. She doesn't have a computer. And, um, so yeah, that's in the works that should be coming soon. So yeah, that's, uh, some of the things that I've got planned. I have been talking to other things. Some things have fallen through. Some things are a bit unknown at the moment. Um, but it's in the works. I'm doing what I can. And otherwise I might start doing solo podcast episodes because uh, I think there is space for that. There are definitely topics that I could cover and discuss and some of them were hinted at in this podcast I can imagine because I was trying to set myself up for discussing certain things that I've not been talking about. So we'll see how that goes and um that's something which I'd like to do a podcast on. There's several things that I'd like to talk about, um, you know, just as solo episodes. And that's all That's all uh, yet to be done. So we'll see how it goes. There are, oh yeah, there are a couple of other people who, uh, Mike um, Davis, I always say Williams, Mike Davies or Davis, um, Davies, I think it is. Uh, he, uh, he's been fantastic. He was a previous guest. He's been fantastic for doing referrals to other guests and getting other artists on the podcast. It was thanks to him that I had, uh, Sarah Williams. And I've also got a couple of other people, um, hopefully that are going to be guests at some point soon as well. So I look forward to that. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, share this with any friends and family that you think might enjoy it. Um, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.